Hi everyone, welcome to Spring Veggies to Cook and Grow. Um, so in the chat, we're just putting spring vegetables that you've tried growing before, so you can keep that going if you'd like. And the recipes are linked both in the chat and in the BCAL. Um, so I wanted to do this class today because of course we're still in this pandemic and it's stressful and a lot of us are feeling a loss of control in a lot of different ways. Um, but gardening can help with both of those and so can cooking. So we're kind of combining these two things that are good for our health and our well-being. Um, but gardening is relaxing. It provides a sense of control and it's also just satisfying and rewarding. Um, so especially if you're spending more time at home and you can connect in nature in that way where you see your plants, even if they're not vegetables, just any plants growing and making progress, it's really rewarding and it makes you feel really good. So even if you can't garden outside, maybe even just having a couple of house plants can be really helpful. So I encourage you to give that a try if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, it's spring is here. It's March, spring is coming. I guess still technically winter. So it's a great time to start thinking about growing some vegetables. So for this class, I picked a few vegetables that are easy to grow that you could be starting to plant now, either a seed or a transplant. I'm going to give you a little bit of information on the timing. It's also on your recipe handout. Um, so some will be ready more quickly than others, like arugula will grow a little faster. Tomatoes are going to take a little bit longer, but like we were saying before class, so rewarding and so delicious when you can grow them at home. Um, so I have more information on the handout about how to grow vegetables at home, but I reached out to the UC Master Gardeners, which is a great resource that's on your handout. And I'll just share what they, they told me about starting seeds. So if you wanna start vegetables from seed, um, you wanna do it in a specific way to make sure that it's successful. So their recommendation is to use really almost any container that has drainage holes and to sanitize it with 10% bleach solution. So that's one part bleach to nine parts water and then rinse it really well. And then they said to use new seed starting mix. I think they're trying to reduce the risk of um, infection or things that will kill the seeds. New starting uh, soil mix three quarters of the way to the top and then firm and level it, add the seeds and then cover with the suggested amount of soil that should be on your seed packet. So that's just a little bit of information on how to get started with starting seeds. Um, but you can read more on our handout about how to do that. So the um, vegetables that we're featuring today, there's a few. Um, the first one is going to be spinach. I'm using baby spinach in the skillet lasagna. I'm also using basil, which is more of an herb than a vegetable, but still something you can grow at home. Um, we're also going to use zucchini, which is a summer vegetable, a little bit harder to grow at home, um, need a little bit more space. So if you have to buy the store at the farmer's market, that's totally fine too. And then I'm going to show you a recipe with uh, arugula, this is arugula from the farmer's market. So let's get started with the skillet lasagna. So this is a recipe that I really wanted to show because it's kind of inspired by another recipe that I like to make that's on our website, the eggplant lasagna rolls. And I like a lot of variety when I cook and I like to make something different every time. So when I make a recipe more than once, it means I really like it. So I make that recipe a lot. Um, and what I like about it is that it's easy and you're basically just making your own ricotta actually out of tofu, which I'm gonna show you. Um, and it tastes really good. And I've had people who tell me they don't like tofu or eggplant and they actually like that dish. So this is kind of a twist on that, but I find it even easier because we're just throwing everything in a skillet. So it's really fun. Um, this recipe is also packed with all kinds of different veggies. Um, it's warm, it's creamy, it's just uh, flavorful. It's got a lot going on. And um, we're basically cooking everything one pan. So. What we're gonna start with, I have my overhead camera here so you can get a better view. We're gonna start by actually making 
ricotta cheese out of tofu. So if you eat dairy, you don't need this to be vegan or dairy free, then you can just use regular ricotta cheese. You don't have to go through the steps of mixing it with everything else in the food processor. Just plop it right on top when we get to that step. But um, I wanted to show you how to do this because I think it tastes really good. Um, it helps you eat more of a plant-based diet. If that's something you're interested in. Um, it maybe saves you money because tofu is pretty affordable. So what you wanna do is use extra firm tofu and we wanna press out the liquid. So I've made the mistake of not pressing out enough liquid before making this recipe and the ricotta was just too watery. It tasted okay, but it was a little watery. So you can get kind of a head start by um, using extra firm tofu rather than just firm tofu. Um, there's not going to be as much water, but we're also going to press it. So what I like to do is just put it between two small plates and then put something heavy on top. I put the marinara sauce on top. You can see it in the corner there. And I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll drain off the water. So in the meantime, we can go ahead and get everything else started. So we're going to be using the food processor for this. And um, we're going to basically be using some lemon juice because cheese is kind of tangy. It's going to give it that tangy quality. And we're going to use the juice of two lemons. We're also going to be using um, some nutritional yeast, which is uh, plant-based food. It has kind of a cheesy flavor. So that's what's going to make this whole thing taste kind of cheesy. And then we're also going to add some um, basil and oregano to give it some more flavor and then just a little salt and pepper. So while the tofu is draining, I'm going to go ahead and uh, juice my lemons. So we want the juice of two lemons for this. One more. And I like to save these spent um, lemon halves because with these wooden cutting boards, um, they can pick up the flavors of things like garlic and onion. So I like to just rub the uh, lemon on it when I'm done, and then it helps get rid of kind of those stinky flavors. Okay, so juice of two lemons, go ahead and throw it in there. I'm going to set this aside because we're going to use it again later. And then we're going to add the nutritional yeast. So we need three tablespoons. One, so you can kind of see this. Two, three, out of side. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to add uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, and while I'm doing this, um, in the chat, since I like to make this interactive, um, we were already talking about spring vegetables that you've grown. So maybe if we have any experienced gardeners in there, um, if you have any advice for novice gardeners, go ahead and put it in the chat. Or maybe you are a novice gardener and there's something that you've learned recently that's really helpful. Why don't we uh, share some tips for each other in the chat? Okay, uh, we're also gonna add some dried oregano. We need one tablespoon. If you happen to have fresh oregano, the rule of thumb is that you use um, three times as much fresh as you do dried or vice versa. If a recipe calls for fresh and you're using dried, divide it by three because the dried is way more potent. So all that water is gone. And then we're going to add some salt and pepper. So we just need about a half teaspoon each. Uh, salt and pepper. Okay, it's kind of hard.
hard to measure pepper from the grinder, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, looks like we got some good questions in the chat um, that maybe some of you can answer. Questions about gardening. Tips for feeding tomatoes. Um, and how to organically get rid of aphids on kale. Um, somebody says, father-in-law uses a shop vac to get rid of aphids. Interesting. <laughs> Just suck them right off, I guess. Um, I don't know if this works on aphids, but I've also read about um, making like a soap and water solution and spraying it on there. Um, and I think there's some things that you can sprinkle on the ground that maybe deter bugs like coffee grounds. But if anybody knows a little bit more about that, feel free to share. Okay, so we've got everything in the um, food processor for the ricotta except for the basil. We're gonna do that last because we don't wanna puree it and turn it like into a green paste. Um, and the, since the tofu is extra firm, I'm not too worried about letting it sit for a really long time to drain. So there's not gonna be as much liquid as if it were just firm tofu. So I just poured off probably like a couple tablespoons of liquid. So I'm gonna break this into chunks and just throw it in the food processor. Okay, so um, now we're just going to pulse it a little bit uh, puree it and then we'll add the basil. Okay, so we went, go, went ahead and got it started. And now we need about a half a cup of basil, which I'm just going to eyeball. I'm just going to um, tear off the leaves here. We don't really want the stems. This is basil that I've already washed. Unfortunately, this isn't basil I've grown myself. Um, from my experience, basil is a little tricky to grow. Um, I've heard a lot of friends say this as well, that they, they buy the plant and they can keep it alive, but in terms of getting it to regrow, it's a little tricky. So if anybody has any good tips there, feel free to share that with us. Um, but if you do buy it in the store and you want to keep it fresh, um, probably the best way to do that is not so much putting it in the fridge, but um, put it in a glass of water and cover it with the um, plastic bag that it came in, and that will keep it fresh longer. Um, so I'll just show you over here. I actually have some Thai basil that I bought, and that's how I store it. I bought this. Well, at least a week ago and it's still doing pretty well. I've even actually had the, not regular basil, but Thai basil. I've had it grow roots like this and I was able to plant it and it actually kept growing. All right, so now that should be about half a cup. So I'm just gonna pulse this to get the basil kind of chopped up, but not totally pureed. So there you can see we have our tofu ricotta. It's kind of chunky like ricotta. We don't want it to be too mushy or anything. So we're just gonna set that aside for later. All right, so let's go ahead and prep everything else. Like I said, we're using um, a whole bunch of veggies here. Uh, so we wanna go ahead and chop them up. So we're gonna first, start by sauteing some onion. So I'm gonna cut up half of onion and I'm just gonna dice it. And this is of course gonna just give this recipe some flavor. And then of course we'll add um, a little bit of garlic. Garlic and onion are a good base for a lot of recipes. Okay. okay, so I'm using my claw method here. So I 
know, my fingertips. So we're going to cook that first. We're also going to need um, three cloves of garlic. them to release the skins. Uh, looks like I couldn't really tell, but looks like we had some really good um, feedback in the chat. I don't know if maybe somebody from our team could read off some of the tips, if you don't mind, um, or I can take a break and try to read some of them. I can go ahead and read them, Kim, while you're working. Oh, thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Okay, let me scroll up a bit and see what we've got. We had a question about feeding tomatoes. Um, we had a question about organically getting rid of aphids on kale. Um, let's see. I think Kim already read this about the shop vac. See cabbage worms destroying kale. Someone said store-bought basil plants. Um, it, when you buy it at the store, it might actually be a bunch of plants put together. So it's good to break it up when you get home and replant them separately. I don't know mm -hmm. if anyone else has tried that. Ooh, we have a response on aphid control. So you can buy ladybugs at the nurseries. And if no ladybugs, then gently spray them off from the hose or oh, off with the hose as you see them. So no need to check at least every other day to keep them off. And in addition to water, you can hang yellow aphid sticky traps. Hmm. So lots of feedback on ladybugs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for sharing your tips. That's really cool. Um, so we've got our garlic and onions, which we're going to cook first, but I'm also going to throw mushrooms in here. If you don't like mushrooms, you can leave them out or, um, you know, choose a different vegetable. There's some room for flexibility in this recipe. But I like to just have lots of different veggies in here. And we want about four cups of sliced mushrooms. So that's probably gonna be about one of these small containers. And I'm using um, brown mushrooms, but of course you can use white as well. It'll be pretty similar. I think there was a question about nutritional yeast in the chat. Um, so that's just gonna give this a cheesy flavor. Um, it, you may have never heard of it, it might sound kind of weird, but it's actually becoming more common and easier to find as plant-based diets become more popular, and as people try alternatives to animal products like cheese. Um, so you can find it actually at Trader Joe's, Sprouts, um, sure Whole Foods has it, Berkeley Bowl. Um, you may even be able to find it at kind of the more mainstream stores like Safeway now. Um, but you could leave it out. It just won't have so much of a cheesy flavor or you could use just actual cheese, but I'm gonna be using it in both recipes because we're using it kind of as a, a Parmesan replacement. But if you eat dairy or cheese, then you could just uh, you know use Parmesan instead. Okay, so I have some more veggies to chop up, but I'm just gonna do that as we cook. So what I'm gonna do is preheat a large skillet we want a pretty big pan because we're cooking the entire dish in this pan. Um, so yeah, pretty big pan. Maybe if you don't have a big skillet like that, you could use maybe a Dutch oven or something. I wouldn't use a real deep pot because you are serving it out of the pan. You kind of want it to be shallow enough that you can see what you're getting um, as long as things aren't, aren't bubbling over. 
Okay, so we are going to use uh, one tablespoon of olive oil to saute the vegetables. The recipe calls for a, four, uh, a quarter of a cup, which is four tablespoons divided. So you use three in the ricotta, and we're gonna use the remaining one tablespoon. I'm just gonna eyeball it to saute our veggies. So first we'll cook the onions until they begin to brown for a few minutes, and then we'll add the garlic until it's fragrant, and um, then the mushrooms. Then we're gonna cook all that and the mushrooms for a few minutes, and then we're gonna basically just throw everything else into the pot, cover it, and cook it for 10 minutes, and then it's gonna be ready. So it's a really simple recipe. Um, if you want to simplify it more, you can buy pre-sliced uh, mushrooms. Um, you can change out different veggies, however you'd like. Um, I wouldn't cut out all the veggies completely. It's probably going to affect, you know, the volume and the amount of, amount of water. Because we need some of that water from the veggies to help cook the pasta. Um, but you'll see it's it's pretty easy to throw together. Okay, so let's throw in our um, onion into the pan. And we're going to cook that until it begins to brown. So probably about five minutes. Unfortunately, I'm not going to bring the camera over there because not the overhead camera because it'll the heat from the pan is going to cook my phone. So I'm going to try to just uh, show you what I'm doing. I'll bring the pan over and put it under the camera so you can see it. All right, um, so we can just set all this aside for now. And I have a little bit of space on my cutting board. So let's go ahead and cut up the zucchini. So since we're gonna cook all this for about 10 minutes, we don't want things to get too overcooked. So um, I'm gonna cut the zucchini into chunks. Zucchini has a lot of water. It's kind of a soft vegetable, so it cooks pretty quickly. And overcooked zucchini isn't great. We maybe want it to have a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna just cut it into kind of like half inch or maybe even three quarter inch chunks. I've also made this recipe where I spiralize the zucchini and that was kind of fun. It just is gonna cook a little faster. There's a little bit of a weird piece right there that I'm gonna cut out. Okay. Medium high heat for the onions. So I hear them kind of popping, so I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Okay, so zucchini is all ready to go. Give that a stir. Okay, so um, we're talking about growing vegetables, right? So I mentioned zucchini, um, more of a summer vegetable. So you would probably plant it next month in April. Um, usually you start the seeds between April and June. So it's a little bit early for a zucchini still. Um, but if anybody has grown zucchini and has tips, then please feel free to share those in the chat. Um, we also uh, used our basil already. It's in the ricotta cheese. Um, basil, you would start from seeds in April next month, or you can transplant it between April and June. Um, so basil could definitely grow in a pot if you just have, you know, a, a patio and not a whole garden to grow it in. All right, so our onions are beginning to brown. Maybe give them another minute or two and then we'll throw in the other vegetables. But we can just go ahead and get everything else ready. So the pasta that I'm using is fusilli. I only had time to go to Trader Joe's and they didn't have egg noodles. Egg noodles, of course, have egg in them. So if you need this recipe to be vegan, then you probably want to use a regular pasta that is egg free. Um, and the amount is about six ounces 
which is about three cups dry. So this is a pound here, probably usually pasta you buy by the pound. Um, so I'm gonna end up measuring it out when it's time to throw this in. I'm just getting that started there. All right, so let's throw in our three cloves of garlic into the pot. And we're just cooking this until it's fragrant. You can see here, uh, onions are browned. Garlic, we don't want to cook too long like that because it can burn. So let's go ahead and throw in our mushrooms. Okay, so we're just gonna saute these mushrooms a little bit, let them get a little bit brown before we throw all the wet ingredients in. We're also going to use a jar of marinara sauce, um, just a regular jar, usually about 25 to 28 ounces. And then we're gonna add a little bit of water just to help uh, cook the pasta. All right, so another minute or two on the mushrooms, and then we'll throw everything in. Um, so uh, some other veggies that maybe you could add to this recipe or to swap out with the others might be kale, maybe roasted eggplant, or even tomatoes. But um, some these are some of my favorites that are just easy to, to throw in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start adding everything else to the pot. So we're gonna add the whole jar of marinara sauce. So we'll turn down the heat. Um, we're gonna add about a cup of water. I'm gonna get rid of these noodles. And what I like to do is put the water, measure out a cup of water, put it into the marinara sauce jar and shake it up just to get the last bits of the marinara sauce in there. And then your jar is clean. You can save it or do whatever you want. And then we want three cups of noodles. I already put one cup in there, so just set that aside. Um, then we're going to add the zucchini and the spinach. So we have our two zucchini. For the stir if you want. And then we're going to add um, one cup of spinach. I find that one cup is generally about a big handful, so I'm just going to throw that in there. And if you want to use whole wheat noodles, they're just going to take a little bit longer to cook, and usually they need a little bit more water. So maybe cook it for an extra five minutes or so. Um, and add an extra half cup of water. But it kind of depends on the noodles, so you might have to play around with it a little bit. Okay, so I just stirred everything up and I'm kind of flattening it down. Let's see, did we add everything? We got marinara, pasta, zucchini, spinach, cup of water. So I stirred it together and now we're actually gonna top it with dollops of the ricotta. And this is just um, going to warm it up and it's going to help it kind of sink into the, um, the lasagna. So let's see how I can show you this. 
I'll bring it over when I'm done. So I'm just going to kind of plop it on top there. Do maybe, you know, six or seven dollops around the, the pan. You don't want to totally cover it because you want to be able to see all that good stuff and give it the opportunity to, to bubble up. So here's what that looks like. Oops, maybe I have a lag going on on my, oh, there it is. That's what it looks like. So it looks kind of dry and funny right now, but I'm going to pop a lid on it and cook it for 10 minutes. And then it should be done, depending on your pasta and you know how much liquid you have in there from the veggies. It may take a little bit longer or a little less time. Um, so you know, just taste it and and give it more time or add a little more water around the sides if that's necessary. So now I'm going to rinse out my food processor bowl because we're going to use this for the next recipe too. All right, so now we are going to make arugula pesto. And you can check on your um, pot. You want it to just kind of simmer. We don't want to boil it. The extra water out of there. See my food processor again. Okay, so next we're making arugula pesto. I think somebody mentioned arugula at the beginning as a vegetable that they've grown. It's one of the easier ones to do. A lot of the greens tend to be a little bit easier and they grow quickly, so it's more rewarding. So arugula, um, you would direct seed it between March and May, or you can do fall, uh, August to October, or you could buy it and transplant it between February and May and September and October. So it's kind of a spring and a fall vegetable. Um, so if anybody else has grown um, arugula, feel free to share your tips there. So we're going to be making pesto out of it because why not? You know, arugula kind of has a peppery flavor, so it's a fun green to use. Um, there aren't a lot of recipes that are super arugula heavy, you know, so if you have a lot, this is kind of a good way to use it up. Um, so I like to kind of think of this recipe as sort of a, a budget pesto too. Not that it's, I mean, it still tastes good, right? But, um, but it's a little bit cheaper to make because arugula is a lot cheaper than basil. I'm just gonna eyeball it. We want about two cups, so about two big handfuls. And pine nuts are traditionally used in pesto. Um, obviously basil is traditionally used instead of arugula, but you can use other vegetables, leafy greens, like spinach and arugula and other herbs, or you can do a combination. So you could also add or make it out of parsley or cilantro. Um, but if you're looking for a good parsley based uh, sauce, chimichurri is one of my favorites, especially in the summer with like grilled vegetables. So we have a recipe for that on um, Cookwell Berkeley and it's really, really good. Um, but so you could use pine nuts. Um, pine nuts can be a little bit pricey. Um, walnuts tend to be a little cheaper. You can use either one. I'm just gonna go ahead and use walnuts in this recipe. So we want about a quarter cup. I'm just pop that in there. And then again, um, since we're making everything here plant-based, I'm gonna use nutritional yeast to give it that little bit of cheesy flavor rather than Parmesan. Um, Parmesan is traditionally used. You can use other dry aged cheese. If you do eat um, you know, dairy or cheese and don't need this to be plant-based, then you could uh, definitely substitute Parmesan. Usually um, pesto has a bit more Parmesan in it than a tablespoon, you know, maybe a quarter cup or even more than that. So you can do it according to your taste. And if you don't have a food processor, you can actually make this with a mortar and pestle. 
which is more of the traditional way of making pesto actually. So you can make that without the food processor. We're also going to use some lemon because arugula is kind of uh, bitter. So this is gonna make it have kind of more of a zesty flavor. And we're gonna use both the zest and the juice. So we're gonna use the zest of half a lemon. Um, and then let's start with the juice of half a lemon, but I've made this where I use the whole lemon. Also kind of depends on how big your lemon is, but you probably want, start with about a tablespoon of uh, juice and then add more, add up to another um, tablespoon by taste if you want. Okay, so that's about half of the lemon. I like to roll out my citrus before I juice it, just helps make it a little bit easier to juice. Um, I think I mentioned this in the last cooking class, we we're talking about saving money. And um, what you can do is anytime you juice lemons is you can zest them and then just save the zest in the freezer. And that way you're just getting a little bit more out of everything that you buy. Okay, so I said, uh, start with just one tablespoon of lemon juice for now. I usually get about two tablespoons out of each lemon. Then we're gonna add one clove of garlic and I'm just gonna throw it in whole since we're using the food processor here. I'm not gonna bother to chop it up. See, this looks like one giant clove of garlic that I have left here. So if you, this is a actually the center of my garlic. I've never seen such a huge clove in the middle. Usually it's a bunch of little ones. That would be way too much for to add raw. So I'm just gonna add kind of a small chunk, you know, maybe about a teaspoon or so of the garlic. And then we're gonna add half a teaspoon of salt. Let's a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon. My um, skillet lasagna is cooking away. It's bubbling a little bit hard, so I just turn the heat down a little bit. Um, let's see. And then we need a third of a cup of olive oil. So we're going to first puree everything else, and then we're just going to stream in the olive oil. So I'm going to get that ready with my measuring cup. This is kind of the traditional way to do it where you um, you're not using a mortar and pestle at least to just stream it in through the top of the food processor. Okay, that's gonna tip over, so let's see. You can see that. Let's take a look. You might wanna um, scrape this down first. Okay, so now I'm going to take the lid off and while I'm running it, I'm going to stream in the olive oil. Okay, so there we have our pesto. If you want this to be um, a little more runny, then you can add more olive oil. If you want it to be more thick, like a paste, then you can just add less olive oil. So you can really um, customize it to your taste. So just to show you how this looks, I'm gonna take it out of the food processor and put it into a bowl. So, um, oops, I'm making a little bit of a mess here as usual. So you can use this for pasta. It could be warm pasta with uh, maybe some tomato and zucchini or whatever other vegetables you like. I, I'm not going to show it because we're already making a pasta dish. Um, you can use it as a spread on sandwiches. You could put a dollop of it on soup. 
which I think is one of the best ways to elevate just a regular old vegetable soup, put a dollop of pesto on it, and it just takes it to another level. Um, you could also um, make a cold pasta salad with it, with maybe like tomato and cucumber. You can you can toast bread and put on top, make sort of like a crostini type of thing. Um, or, you know, I mentioned putting it on a sandwich, but you could also mix it with mayo to make an aioli. So um, hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's our uh, arugula pesto. So if you don't have a food processor, um, if you happen to have a mortar and pestle, you could grind up the uh, arugula that way. And then you could probably get the um, walnuts ground a little finer that way as well. Um, and then just kind of finely mince up everything else. Or you could probably, yeah, do the garlic, the walnuts and the arugula all in the mortar and pestle if you have one. If you don't have one, um, you could try just chopping it by hand. Um, I was just maybe trying the chimichurri recipe because that uh, I've definitely done without a food processor. Usually I do just kind of mince up the parsley by hand. It's not as creamy of a sauce, um, but it's really good. Uh, somebody said that you could use a blender. Yeah, you could use a blender too. You just might have to pulse it. And some, sometimes when you make things in a blender, like if you have a big old blender and you're making a small amount, sometimes you gotta stir it a whole lot because it's used to making big things, uh, smoothies or whatever. But if you have one of the smaller blenders, like a magic bullet, that would probably work really well. Um, so this should probably keep in the fridge for about a week in an airtight container. Or if you make too much, you can put it in ice cube trays and freeze it and then take it out of ice cube trays and store it in another airtight, airtight container in the fridge. That way, you know, if you have a, a bowl of soup, just throw an ice cube on there and, and reheat it. Um, but the thing is, it will probably stay in your ice cube tray. So maybe you don't want to use your one white ice cube tray that you use for drinks because it'll be green. <laughs> so you may need one specifically for that um, or one that you know doesn't have colors. So then you can throw it in soups, stews, and uh, sauces. So the timer went off for our uh, skillet lasagna. So I'm gonna take a look at it here if the pasta looks done. So just by looking at it, um, you know, a lot of these recipes aren't exact. Um, you want to taste things, you know, especially before you add salt, just do it to taste. Um, maybe try it, check the texture. Um, see if it's done. I can kind of tell by looking at it that it needs a little bit more time. There's a lot of liquid on top. So I'm just going to cook it for a few more minutes with the lid off to boil off some of the extra liquid. Depending on what type of vegetables you're using, you might get more liquid. So let's give it another three or four minutes. Also depends on what type of pasta you're using. Um, but I can also kind of just look at the pasta and see that it needs a little bit more time. So just keep an eye on this. Um, so that's pretty much everything that we're cooking. So the last few minutes, I just wanted to ask a few other questions and uh, talk a little bit more about gardening. So in the chat, I asked um, if you've grown arugula, so you can share that, or maybe other ways that you use arugula. And how do you like to use pesto? So how do you use arugula and how to use pesto? You can answer that in the chat if you'd like. But I also wanted to mention some of the resources that are linked on the recipe sheet. The first one is East Bay Planting Times. If you happen to live in East Bay, the Ecology Center is a really great resource. Um, they have a store, they have classes that are right now all virtual. A lot of them are free or done on a sliding scale. You can become a member and then you get discounts. They even have a seed blending library. So really great resource if you're new to gardening or experienced really. Um, so they have a chart on when to plant things in the East Bay. We'll just turn the heat down because I hear my lasagna bubbling really aggressively. 
Um, the UC Master Gardeners is a great resource. There's, um, they pretty much have, a, I don't know if you call it a chapter or a division in every county. So you can look up the county that you live in and they can give you advice because we have so many different microclimates here in the Bay Area. And you can ask some questions too. So that's why I, did. I said, hey, I'm doing a class. What recommendations do you have for beginners in the Bay Area? And they gave me some about Alameda County Garden um, month by month, what to do. So it says January and February, this is kind of how you prep your garden. This is what you do in, in March and April. And just gives you a month by month schedule of basically what to do to get your garden ready. They also offer um, gardening classes through UC Master Gardeners. The Ecology Center has sustainable living classes, like I mentioned, not just on gardening, but on electric vehicles and um, upcycling and how to do use gray water at home, all kinds of things about sustainable living. There's also a Center for Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems through UC Santa Cruz. I heard about from a, a colleague in Santa Cruz. Um, Spiral Gardens is a really cool resource in Berkeley and they have something that they call the Community Food Security Project. So it's kind of like a community garden, but rather than having your own plot, it's all a shared garden and it's for everybody. So um, if you go, you know, you can grow things or harvest, everybody's working together on the same garden. So you can harvest whatever's available or plant things then for somebody else to eat later. So um, really cool if you wanna check that out. And then there's some information more information on seed starting through um, the Napa County UC Master Gardeners. So uh, let me see what some of the responses were here about arugula. So somebody said putting the pesto on pasta, bruschetta, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, pizza, toast, Toast with egg, almost any carb. Yeah, pesto and carbs go great together. And then somebody else said, arugula on sandwich is a great complement to salty meats or cheese. Yeah, that sounds really good. It's got a fresh taste, kind of peppery. Um, so it is good raw. A uh, little bit in a salad. You can do a whole arugula salad if you want, but I like to kind of mix it in with other greens too. Um, you can even put uh, I don't know if anybody said this, you can put like a little bit of arugula on top of your pizza or flatbread. So a lot of ways to use arugula. So I'm gonna bring over my lasagna here so you can see it. Looks like it's probably pretty much done. Everything's all bubbling up. Um, the cheese is getting kind of absorbed. I like when the sauce kind of bubbles up around the ricotta cheese. The pasta looks pretty much done. Um, so why don't I just show you what this looks like if I pull out a portion. It's just kind of like a messy lasagna that's really easy. You don't have to cook the noodles separately. You don't have to layer anything. Just throw it all in the pan. And yeah, it's messy, but it's good. So I'll show you over here too. Nice, easy weeknight meal that can be done in about half an hour or so. So that is all the time we have for today. Um, hopefully we'll see you at our next class. We're doing a brunch class in April. We'll put this recording on our website. We have all the other past recipes on Cookville Berkeley. So I encourage you to check it out um, and check out some of our other classes that we have like yoga this week, um, creativity and your well-being. We have a couple more classes a semester, um, dancing classes, all kinds of good stuff to keep you well while we are still, you know, trying to all get through this pandemic together. So I'll stick around if you have any questions after class. And otherwise, I hope to see you next time. Thank you.